somebody who has potential on several fronts. And the idea is that the more skills that you acquire, the more opportunities for uh, synergy there are. So if I'm really looking for a new way to be creative, then I'm either looking to acquire a new skill that I can then shine a light across all my other old skills with and see if new things come out of, or find somebody who has a new skill and try and collaborate with them. The Becoming Da Vinci Show is sponsored by The Kinetic Experience, where entrepreneurs go to have even more success and more fun in their business and life. Becoming Da Vinci. Da Vinci. So to learn more about The Becoming Da Vinci Show, visit us at www.becomingdavinciShow.com where you can learn all sorts of stuff about Leonardo da Vinci and what we are doing to correlate his life and his example with modern day entrepreneurs and self-directed learning. Becoming da Vinci. Hey, this is Abe Dimi. I'm Janica Morton. And welcome to the Becoming da Vinci show. This is episode number seven. seven. So we met Dano Art on Instagram and he had one of his artworks featured on Octonation. And it was this beautiful octopus. So I reached out to him to talk about his artwork. And before you knew it, I uh, thought it would be an awesome opportunity to interview him because he is really a modern day Leonardo da Vinci. Yes, he is all about being a misfit and a rebel and a creative and he's totally curious and innovative and an educator and we had a fascinating time talking with him. Lots of laughter and learned a lot. Um, his art is beautiful. So check him out, D-A-Y-N-O-A-R-T on Instagram. So this is the first time we've interviewed somebody outside of our office. We recorded this on Zoom and we actually pushed it live to Facebook. So this was an interesting learning opportunity for us. Uh, there's a little bit of technical challenges that we've had to overcome, but it's been really awesome. And the cool part is now we can expand who we interview to people all around the world. For more information, check out our website, becomingdavinciShow.com. And let's go check out our show. Hey. We see you live. What's huh? up, man? Cool. Hi. Wait, you that's 20 seconds delayed though yet? Yes, don't watch it. It's yeah. really weird. Don't watch Facebook. It gets trippy. <laughs> so this will be the first time we've ever done this. I'll be caught in the past. Yes. <laughs> you, <laughs> wait, are we, I, I, but aren't we always? That gets really We spend a lot of time in the future too, unfortunately. I do too. So that means you must be very aware of... Uh, that's good. So... The presence is all the president is all we have, right? Yeah, I mean that's the statement, and I think it's true, except that we have a, we have this ability for abstraction, so we can step into the future and the past anytime we want, and we tend to do it more than we should. But yes, yes, absolutely. So we're going to do this. We're going to kick off this recording of the Becoming Da Vinci episode, which will be our first time ever actually interviewing someone outside of the city of Dallas. First time recording it here on Zoom and funneling that into Facebook, so via Facebook Live. So we'll just see how this goes. How's that? Hmm. I'm in for it. We'll see what happens. We'll see so, if my opinions changed after we're done. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the goal of the episode, and, and to share with you specifically around what we do and what, we, what, what the whole purpose is, is that we're covering the life of Leonardo da Vinci, not from a historical perspective only, but from a perspective of understanding how his life is and the traits of his life are influencing us today. And when I saw the work that you, that I saw your work via Instagram, uh, blown away, man. I mean, yeah. just super awesome. I showed it to Janica immediately, showed it to my wife, yeah. um, went on that website you recommended. So it was just really like, obviously there's a story here. And so instead of just talking about your art, which we really want to get uh, an understanding of your art, but really a lot of your processes and your thoughts around different elements of your creative process. Oh, interesting. Well, I can't promise that I'm going to give you an exceptionally satisfying answer because a lot of that's still opaque to me. That's but awesome. uh, I'd love okay. to explore it with you. <laughs> yes, Definitely. That's absolutely. So that's, that's the whole like intro as to the show and of course, how, how we, how we met each other and so forth. And so Janica, do you want to, you want to take it from here? Sure. So, um, at the kinetic experience, we're the sponsor of the becoming da Vinci show. Abe and I are the kinetic experience along with some other um, experts. And our whole goal is to promote, um, entrepreneurship, promote people into finding their purpose and passion and helping them, reach that. And through that, we found that self-directed learning, um, curiosity, innovation, all these key tenets of Da Vinci were integrated into this whole process that we're trying to support. 
So we are redefining success to include our heart and our love and our compassion and our caring for one another. That's like a big piece of, of who we are. Um, <clears throat> and we believe that success in our life happens when our choices are aligned with our heart and when caring becomes a defining aspect of who we are so that it's, it creates community and it creates support and it creates involvement versus the siloed people out in the world. Um, so when we were looking through your, your art, there, there's so much character and there's, there is heart in it and there's, there's emotion and there's just, there's so many different components. So I can't wait to dig into that. But I think that you are a, a key piece to, um, or a key player in, in the role of becoming Da Vinci. Um, definitely working on that path and I can't wait to hear more about you. Oh so, man, I really appreciate that. All the, all the compliments, uh, keep them coming. You're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> that's so awesome. So what I'll, I'd like to read for, read for you a paragraph that's right out of the book. Actually, here, let me step out for a second. I'm going to show you, uh, so this is the book. I wonder what it looks like on the camera if it mirrors or not. But anyways, so this is the book by Walter Isaacson, which is a book that we, we've read a lot about or read, read a lot through as we go to understand uh, what da Vinci's life was like and his traits. And so this particular paragraph is really interesting. So it says the 15th century of Leonardo and Columbus and Gutenberg was a time of innovation, exploration, and the spread of knowledge by new technologies. In short, it was a time like our own. That is why we have so much to learn from Leonardo. His ability to combine art, science, technology, the humanities, and imagination remains an enduring recipe for creativity. So too was his ease of being a bit of a misfit, illegitimate, gay, vegetarian, left-handed, easily distracted, and at times heretical. So when you hear that, what are you thinking about as you listen to that paragraph describing the era of Da Vinci and then thinking about the era that we live in today? Um, I find myself thinking back to the time I spent teaching uh, because we have a tendency to take all of these different subjects, the humanities and, you know, literature and art and science and even the different subcategories of science and we make them all into a different class nice. and we say okay now you're going to learn all the things that are chemistry now you're going to learn all the things that are you know world history between blah 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 the 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 sort of implication there is that they are completely separate and just as your excerpt kind of uh, seem to be arguing. I think they really shouldn't be separated, because there's a lot. There's a lot of crossover in the way that we think about things. I think um, there's many varieties of creativity, and and exercising one variety really helps you learn how to utilize others. There's kind of a an effect there. I'm not sure what I would um, if I could define that any more specifically than that. But I, I feel like there's a lot of crossover. It's sort of like for learning. Um, your first language is very challenging and then subsequent languages become easier and easier the more you learn. So you kind of flex that muscle or, or mm -hmm. strengthen it, you know? Absolutely. That's great. Mm -hmm. So this kind of leads us right into self-directed learning. Yeah. So what I was going to say with that is, um, watching my own children, I, I basically let them just learn what they want to learn when they want to learn. I, I hands off, go for it. Um, homeschooled them. And what you said really stuck because I would see as they would learn skills, as their brain expanded to learn skills in a certain subject, say, let's just categorize it and say it was math. Then they would at some level be able to apply that way into another level, into something else like science or, or writing or chemistry. And then it got to a point where they were not siloing them. They were combining them. So it was like, oh, well, do you know that when I'm cooking, I'm doing chemistry, I'm doing math, I'm doing science, I'm doing, you know, or history, if it's a, it's a family recipe or whatever, like they were really taking it and understanding that it all became one, one lesson, one learning, and, and then taking those pieces and elements um, and applying it to other things. So that's what I love about self-directed self learning is that it, anyone can do it, no matter your age, and, and babies start with it, right? And as long as we don't take that curiosity out of people, they're going to find things that they're curious for and want to go and learn more and more. So with you, 
Um, can you share examples of how self-directed learning has impacted your life? What are the things that you've said, I want to learn that, and you just go and learn it without, like maybe you go and hire someone to teach you, or maybe you just go and experiment to figure it out. What are, what are some examples and things that you've taught yourself or learned on your own? Hmm. Well, um, before I explain, before I answer that, do you mind if I ask if you've heard of the Waldorf School? Oh, I love it. Yes. Okay, and I'm I'm curious if what you're describing is something like the Waldorf School philosophy. I and I may I may not have a great understanding of the Waldorf School, I, uh, so that might be the source of of this being an incorrect connection. But I, I feel like m the premise is that if you're allowed the opportunity to pursue those. Uh, avenues which you're interested in early on that you'll start to form an association between learning and positivity and then later you'll you'll have that that sort of groundwork laid so that you'll want to learn exactly. is that what you're kind of describing yes so that yes so Waldorf and Montessori both of those are very awesome for little kids to develop that just love and passion for learning because their their curiosity and their direction is not stifled so right. they can pursue it and they're encouraged and they're supported and yeah it's they're great op options yeah well i i in my experience i i was afforded some spectacular opportunities because i got lots of support from my family especially my mom i love my mom with all my heart and more than that um <laughs> she anything that i was ever interested in even if i only like expressed a mild interest she would find some way of facilitating me pursuing it further like anything i was i remember uh for example i once uh expressed in high school some interest in learning more about greek mythology because we talked about it mildly at school and and I, I think it was two days later she came home with this huge like 400 page beautifully illustrated encyclopedia of greek mythology i was like oh my god mom you're amazing that's so <laughs> cool very very supportive so i i feel like i did I got to benefit from that philosophy a lot, that self-directed, what is it that you want to learn about? Go learn about that. Yes. That meant a lot to me in my development. Um, strangely though, I, I feel like for the things that were most, I mean, may, I may have prompted this conversation to begin with, my artwork is one thing that I didn't get a lot of education for. And it's something that I just, you know, I had things that were colorful and I wanted to make a mess and I liked lines and drawing stuff. So I just did it. So I guess that's maybe that's the epitome of self-directed learning, exactly. actually. Yes, exactly. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if this applies, but nobody taught me how to make this. That's exactly how he attacked everything. Like, oh, this is interesting. Let's figure it out. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's what I've been been doing with music for a while now too. I make noises with a bunch of instruments. That's how I would prefer to phrase it because I have no idea what I'm doing, but I know it's rhythmic and at least somewhat melodic. So I'm going for it and I'm enjoying it. And you know, my strategy is actually that I've scattered instruments around my house so that I'll just be walking around and be like, oh, my ukulele, and then I'll just make some noises for a while, and then I'll be like, oh, I just can't think of any more things so I'll put it down or my brother and I will walk down to the corner store I'm like all right this is my perfect opportunity to just walk and play an instrument all the way down and annoy everybody on the way because I'm not very good but <laughs> I do a lot of that so I guess yes I I am a, a strong believer in the self-directed learning as you've described yeah. it that was the perfect perfect answer um, so, so there was a little bit of a gamble here right like Maybe he learned all of this stuff in school, but there was just something about, I don't know, some intuition that, no, this is something I think he's really learned on his own and mastered on his own. So can you tell us a little bit more around the specific art that at least we know of? Um, and we started off with the, with the octopus artwork that you posted, that uh, Octonation posted, our, our friend Warren runs Octonation. Oh, I see. From there is where we, I was like, holy shit, this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then went from, went from there. So how did you get into that, the artwork that you're doing? Um, so if you're referring specifically to those woodcut pieces, I, I think, what I, yes, I think what I'm calling them officially for now is a stepped wood rendering. And that sounds really fancy. And I guess that's an important feature of, of also selling yourself as an artist, which is interesting. Um, but uh, I would say it started 
when uh, a gentleman by the name of Kalen, uh, whose Instagram is Industrious Light, uh, he's found some of my work on Instagram and asked if I'd ever uh, considered collaborating with a laser cutter and uh, described his connection with um, a collective called the Radiant Hive, which has taken on an initiative that I really, I'm very grateful for and I want to be a part of. I want to ride that wave. They like to take, basically it's the cross section of art and technology and how can they be really uh, cross-referenced and, and utilize one another. Doing things, obviously the, um, the laser cut wood pieces would be the uh, utilization of a robotic laser wood cutter, but that's not the only thing they're doing. They're doing things with like projection mapping and with animation and they're trying to push the boundaries as much as they can. Yeah. So Sean contacted me, I'm sorry. Um, Kalen contacted me um, and I did a little bit of work with him. He's very busy though. So I ended up kind of talking to a few other gentlemen from the radiant hive and, uh, Sean Kessler is somebody I work with who, uh, who, uh, his Instagram, uh, and also his story, he goes by laser trees, um, okay. has been collaborating with me a lot to make my work translate more into that medium too. So we've kind of been pushing the boundaries for one another. He had expressed an interest in doing more fine artwork with the, uh, technology he's been doing instead of like, uh, what might otherwise be con like comparatively trivial, small pieces of artwork. Um, and I wanted to try some new things. So we, we both had this new direction we were interested in going in. Um, and I guess we're experimenting with it even now. So I can't conclude that story. I have to, we have to see what happens, but that's, so that's what's cool. going on. So that's perfect. Cause that leads really great into the second, the next question, which is what are you curious about now? Because Leonardo da Vinci had this insatiable curiosities, always curious about different things, things that were not inherently related initially, right? Like it wasn't obviously related to something he may have been doing at the time, but he just had a lot of interest. He had a lot of interest around anatomy and, and, and nature and plants and the way animals uh, functioned and how they, how they lived. So one of the questions that we, we saw out of his diaries, that's really awesome, which is what's describe the the tongue and the texture of a woodpecker right oh yeah so it's that kind of level of curiosity what are the things that you're cur curious about now whether it's inside of your art or just something outside of that in general i love that that's a question that i'm very ready to answer <laughs> um, actually uh there's kind of a two-pronged um advancement that i'm working on right now and they are they're very closely related um, I love the idea, again, uh, building off of this technology and art combination, I love the idea of robotics in artwork and interactive artwork. And my interest uh, and something I'd like to do in collaboration with my brother and some other engineer friends of mine, um, and I have some engineering skills myself, but I don't have enough to, to do, you know, these big, truly a collaboration is what you need for the best pieces. Um, um, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a moment. Um, but robotics and art is something that I would like to try and experiment more with. Um, and within education, I would like to make, uh, sort of, I, I hate to call them educational toys because what I want to create are interactive materials that students can sort of manipulate and experiment with, and they can do it intuitively and have some clear tasks without too much structure. So um, I'm currently talking, uh, hoping to get involved in what is called Fusion Academy, which is nearby here in Berkeley. Yeah. Uh, you might have heard of that as well, Janica. Um, <laughs> And uh, what I'd like to do with them, uh, here's a, just an example of uh, the kind of um, expression this would come out as. I would, I would like to fabricate, uh, say, these, this is just one, I'm struggling to describe this. Uh, so we're going to put this out there. If you know anybody that should be covered on this show, please let us know. We're looking for people that are innovative, whether they have a business or not. We're looking for self-directed learners, innovative people who are always learning and trying new things. Thank you for tuning in to the Becoming Da Vinci show. Join us next time as we learn more about Leonardo and modern day entrepreneurs. Becoming Da Vinci.